Well, uh, I've completely fucked myself over. So I recently uh, rearranged my studio and I made it to, so it was basically enhanced for live performance playing. And uh, in doing so, I've made it completely useless for almost everything else. So this is my normal, you know, working chair or whatever. I have a drum stool, which I sit in here for performances. Um, but with this chair in here, I like barely have any clearance to get around. So I have moved everything away from the walls over there so it's more accessible so I can kind of like press record and like do these drum loops and stuff at the same time. But uh, it ended up kind of making me feel cramped. So like now, like if I want to go back over here, I got this like little random corner. See how long it took me to get to the corner of the room? Ridiculous. You know, previously I could just kind of move the camera anywhere and shoot at a bunch of angles, but now the camera, it's like, I got to move it around all this crap. There's a bunch of stuff in the way. It just made it harder to make regular content. And uh, it was really just only good for the live looping. But even then things were like a little too cramped. Like I'd pick up a guitar and I was like, had to worry about like swinging my guitar and like hitting my monitor. So it's just like, <sighs> it's not working. And basically this whole thing is a quest to optimize this space to make it as awesome as possible to make music in. I almost need to have a name for this because there will be more videos kind of in this series. So how about we call it Studio Quest, the quest for a better studio. It's official now, I can't go back. There's no going back. And something else that I've been uh, running into problems with is I upgraded to this Arteria Keylab 88. The problem was though, is that the old keyboard I had, it slid in here. And so I had this top surface to sort of move different controllers around and kind of focus on working on certain things, have the keyboard up here. So I had this, you know, desk space to use for whatever, but this guy doesn't fit in here and it takes up all my desk space. I have literally no table surface anywhere around me, which is like kind of a problem in any productive workspace. Luckily there is a really good solution. Let me grab it. <laughs> this is gonna change everything. So inside this wonderful box, which has come all the way from Germany is a Jaspers 4D 145B keyboard stand. And this will allow me to move this bad BZ over there against that wall and use this space over there better. We need to get a bunch of crap out of the way first before we can set this up though. So let's do a little rearranging. On a side note about a uh, duster, get out of here. This drum set and the Octopad, I'm actually selling all of my drum stuff soon and I'm gonna have a video about that later on about whether it's even useful to have stuff like this for electronic music production, but it's kind of a waste of space. So uh, I shouldn't say waste of space. You know what, I'm gonna stop talking about this. By the way, I rarely use the machine DAW anymore, but this as a MIDI controller, and this is the Mark II version, you can get them on eBay for like $80 now, is like stupid powerful, but that's for another video also. Cup of shakers, anyone? By the way, I also made this end table. I like to make furniture. I know that a lot of people, when they probably see a bunch of wires they have to reroute, probably get anxious. But when I unplug everything and move everything and I'm left with this chaos of wires, it's like kind of a fetish of mine to like reroute everything and like do it all nice and efficiently. I don't know. I see this and I see possibilities. I can't wait, I'm so excited. So I got a space clear now to put the rack. Now we're ready, start assembling, put this thing together. All right, got all of our pieces here. It's actually more assembled than I thought. I didn't know if the uh, these little like brackets and stuff were gonna be on there or the instrument holders or anything. So, well, the instructions are pretty easy. It's just a single sheet of paper and it just says basically put it on its side and put the pieces together, you idiot. <laughs> Okay, so that actually went together way easier than I thought it would. Not that I thought it was gonna be hard, that was just really quick and easy. So now we're gonna stand this thing up and uh, see how it fits. Also, this thing is actually really lightweight. It's uh, durable, it's all hell, and uh, really lightweight, so that's good. This thing is big, oh my gosh. There's no room. We need to buy a new house. All right, so that was actually pretty easy. Uh, fits in exactly how I measured it, so uh, that's good. So basically, you just have these little bars that fold out here. You can un you can loosen these knobs and you can rotate these to get whatever angle you want. You can also move these bars up and down. So I'm gonna fine tune this a little bit, kind of level it off, and then we'll uh, load it up and uh, get the shway going again. 
six and a half hours late. Okay, so it's been, uh, it's taken a minute here to get it adjusted. And uh, now it's nighttime because I took a break to go watch Dune. That was interesting. Uh, ready to do a little fit here. So here, what I did is I swapped around the configuration a little bit. I set it up backwards. So typically this straight pole actually goes to the back side, but I actually brought it to the front. I'll show you why in just a second. So let's grab the big, big old key lab. So one thing I wanted to be able to do was be able to play this, obviously, and uh, still be able to access these knobs because these control a lot of stuff in the analog lab and uh, just are really good MIDI controllers. So I didn't want whatever was up here to be in the way of this. So with this bar here, with these bars positioned at an angle, and you saw, I don't know if you saw it, but this one here is also positioned. The bars are at an angle instead of perfectly straight and back. I did that because it just was, I was able to keep the rack a little tighter that way so I could get it a little closer to the wall so I can maximize my floor space. And then up here, I have these angled because I actually built a panel up here to hold everything. I went out to the shop and made that. So a uh, Q wood shop sequence. And uh, here's that. So this just kind of fits up in here, just like so. ba doop ba doop ba do, And that just fits in there. Boom, just like that. So now I can take my mod, my whatever MIDI controllers I have or anything, and I can just bloop, 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 just like that. And so now you can kind of see why I put this in, I installed this backwards. So this vertical pole that is usually in the back is now forward, which means this bottom layer is now forward more. And these this these next sections, like it's angled farther back, so this section actually gets pushed back a little bit. Now I can still really easily see everything, adjust my faders, adjust my knobs. I can still throw something onto this panel here. Like here's a SK-1, boom. Sits nicely right there. And uh, that's what's really nice about this Jasper system is they have a lot of different sizes, different shelf mounts. You can buy expansion rods, you can buy more of these little bars. Um, so it's a whole system that you can work with. And that's what kind of drew me to this because I mean, look at the creative potential here and something that's super nice about all this. I got my desk back. It's still a mother flipping mess up in here though. So uh, let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Can't wait to organize this later. Whew, what a day. And you can already see how this setup is gonna work really well. I mean, this stuff was all kind of scattered around me in a weird circle before. Now it's all just in one spot, so I can really just perform live way easier but, and still be able to do production stuff, still be able to move it over here and sit in front of a screen. I just get really tired of sitting in front of the screen all the time. I still have other steps to take to get to where I want to. Um, this is, so this is, we just have a two bedroom house. So this is our second bedroom. So it would be nice to be able to have people sleep in here, but also just have like a nice place to sit or whatever. So I'm actually going to get rid of this drum set because I don't really use it much anymore, but I'm gonna put a futon there, believe it or not. And then this corner over here, this goes back in here. There's a little pocket back in here. So I'm gonna build some shelves and make a little custom shelf back there to put stuff in. Ongoing quest. And then some of the moves will be putting sound panels up on the walls and kind of decorating more, which is something I haven't done yet because this layout has always been very fluid and always changing, and I always enjoy changing things up anyway. I always like having a new layout and kind of changing the energy in the room, get some new vibes going, just kind of keeps you moving, make sure things don't stale out. And it's just always good to be always just improving and optimizing and making things more efficient. And this is just sort of the next chapter in that for me. Oh, also I forgot to mention, I have two Casio SK-1s in my possession. And the uh, reason for that is uh, I'm going to be giving one of them away soon. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for what's going on there. I'll probably talk about it more on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me on my Instagram at Gorley Records. And that is the end of this episode of Studio Quest.